Okay, so I've shown you in another video how to program the uh, QYT-KT8900 using the, uh, the buttons and the, uh, the microphone. But what I want to show you today is using the, the programming cable. This is a USB to serial cable. It is the same type of cable used for the UV3R um, Baofang. So if you got a UV3R, you've, you're already set. <clears throat> now they do make cables um, uh, that have uh, the USB in and a variety of different tips on them, but uh, this is a special one, uh, or a, a standalone, not really special, standalone I would say. Now what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the software that comes specifically for this and a little trick on how you can use Chirp to aid in your repeater programming. Now I tried every option there was in Chirp to try to get it to communicate with this thing and it just won't. <laughs> At least as of today. But you still can use Chirp to to aid in the programming of this and I'll show you that here uh, on the computer screen in just a second so let's fire this guy up and get over on the computer okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the software for the uh, the QIT and you can download this from the download it from the internet uh, just search for QIT KT8900 and you'll find this software. It's readily available. And when you open it up, it's got all this typical, I don't know what your language is stuff. So let's close this window and the second, uh, the second set of question marks from the left. English. Now we can hit channel and we can read it. Let's read from the radio. And what we have here are the frequencies that we previously re, uh, programmed manually using the buttons on the radio and the microphone. And you can see, like typical for me, number one is always our local races. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to shrink this window up here just a bit. <coughs> And what I'm going to show you is I, I previously created this CSV file using Chirp. So I'm just going to rename this to TXT, rename yes, and that's going to make it open up in a notepad. Now what I need to start is, well, first of all, uh, it looks as if I didn't get the name for channel 3 when I was programming it manually so I'm gonna cheat real quick and do highlight control C on the keyboard control V and there we go so for the frequencies what you can do is you can copy the entire frequency copy paste it into this software now we still need the offset, but we can see the offset is negative 0.6. So we pop open the calculator program. We can again paste the frequency and subtract 0.6 equals edit copy. Go back over here and control V. I have my offset. I can look here and see my tone is 110.9, set to tone to 110.9, and I'm going to go ahead and grab the channel name, channel name, and that's the process. Okay, let me do one more. We're going to 
going to start with number five here. We're going to get the frequency. Okay, paste it here. Calculator. Paste it there. Minus 0.6 equals. Edit. Copy. Control V. And I look over here. I'm at 110.9. nine come back over here grab the name name let's go ahead and set these off while we're in here and there we go let's write this to the radio so that we don't lose where we're working at Completed. Let's go back to the radio and see what we get for channel 4 and channel 5, channel 3. Alright, so here we go after programming it using the software and the chirp file and the cutting and pasting. Um, the Racy's channel was already in there. And we're on B, which is down here at the bottom. Let's see what we got. There's channel 2 that was there. Channel 3 now has a name. Plus we have a new channel 4 and a new channel 5. And then we skip 33, which is one I programmed in. So there you have it. it uh, it's not the easiest thing. It's not as easy as using chirp. But starting with a chirp file and then cutting and pasting into the software for this little radio uh, is a much easier way to get all of the frequencies in there correctly with all of the names. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.